Alright, hi! Welcome to Horsin' Around, a dumbass cast. My name is Nicholas Mercadante, and tonight we have with us... Uh, Fernando. And Jacob. I hate you both so much. Oh, well, it was short and snappy. I'll give you that. Well played. Nick, are you trying to tell me I don't sound like a Cuban-American? Uh, yeah, that is what I am trying to are say. You, are you saying I don't sound like a white economist? <laughs> no, I don't there, think there, so. <laughs> There's something exponentially wider by you ad adding my field of study <laughs> onto that statement. I mean, it, it is exponentially wider. The only the only wider thing I could think of as an occupation would probably be accountant. If you were an accountant, you'd you'd be the whitest man on earth. But thankfully, would that be true? I there's got to be wider professions. I don't know. What do you what do you think the whitest profession is? Well, I mean, I've got an answer, but I don't know if it's appropriate for the podcast. <laughs> no, Everything's appropriate. Everything's for the podcast. appropriate. Just don't drop any hard R's or hard F's, and then we should be okay. <laughs> no, I, I was gonna, I was gonna say, <laughs> you, you asked me what the whitest job profession is. Um, I, my mind immediately went to, uh, I don't know, probably <laughs> a white nationalist clan leader. <laughs> well. You know, that is pretty damn white. I don't think there's really any non-white person who's ever held that position. So, yeah. you got me. I mean, look, it, Nando, I think you could really break into the space, though. I think they're really looking for some diversity. They're adding, yeah. <laughs> They're looking listen, to add. Listen, they only care about one color. The other color, they, they, as long as I'm not jumping over a fence, they don't care about me. <laughs> so you <laughs> lead them from across the fence in Mexico? Oh, no, dude, I swim. The Mexicans oh. are what jump. Okay. I it's see. a it's a very important distinction that allows me to join a white supremacy group. And I, I, I definitely believe the white supremacists will be able to tell the difference. They have that level of nuance in them. Yeah, dude. Somehow I feel like this has already gone too far. Yeah, <laughs> it's, fine. it's whatever. I feel like, uh, never mind. I was going to say cut <laughs> it, but actually we should take it, uh, triple it, uh, and yeah. this is... <laughs> we got to triple down. We got to go even further yeah. beyond. Um, but before we go even further beyond, Nando, you had a story that you wanted to bring on to tonight's show. So, what was yeah. your story? Uh, but my first time running over an animal. <laughs> oh. Jesus. Fun and cool. All right. Well, I mean, you want this, to is, this, this, is, this is a very in-depth story. It doesn't just go like, I, I, I you know, wheeled over an animal. Right. Well, I'm this, glad, because has, that would be a pretty lame thing to be like, I want to be on the podcast tonight to tell a really good story. I don't know. You see, so first of all, this wasn't like a squirrel or any like possible, you know, useless animals that do nothing for the world, right? Except exist and eat, right? Well, this was a beaver. Oh. All right. right. Yeah. As everyone knows, so, beavers contribute the most to human society. So Exactly. Dude, they build dams, right? Like we, we basically copied them and built like Hoover Dam and shit. <laughs> that, I, I yeah, I think that's how that works. You're exactly right. I, I'm pretty sure that's exactly what happened too. Uh President Hoover was coming out of the White House and, and a beaver walked up to him and he said, You gotta get your shit together, man. It's not working out. And he said, You know what? <laughs> You're damn right. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus okay. Christ! That was but the anyway, latest <laughs> fucking pun. Thank you Dude, just all right. for it. But uh, I see, I, I, I see this beaver like thirty seconds out from by the time I approach him. So oh, like, so you're I have a enough fucking time. idiot. Yeah. No, 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 no. I, I, no, no. I, no, no. Listen, Mercadante, don't just assume I'm an idiot, right? Okay. I'm a hero in this story. Actually, it's a tragedy. <laughs> Wait, how do we go from hero to tragedy? You're a hero right. of a tragedy? That means yes. you usually end up dead. Most Well, no, no, no. no. Well, actually, you know what? In that case, then the beaver is the hero of the tragedy. I see. Okay. Go on. All right. All right. So, you know, I see this damn beaver, and I'm like, all right, I'm going to get out of the way. I'm not going to kill the goddamn beaver. Yeah. And, you know, this beaver sees me coming out for a while. He sees yeah. me moving away. Yeah. He knows he's safe. Yeah. About... 0.5 seconds before the car approaches, yeah. he turns around and darts into the wheel. <laughs> Dude, that's why you have I mean, to I... slow down when you see things on the side of the road, because they're dumbasses. Like, I've heard the same thing happen with deer, where they're just like, they're just chilling on the side of the road, and then right as you get up next to them, they're just right. like, but like, no, I but can like the problem this. Is, the pro but the problem is, this has led me to such a, like, dilemma in my personal life, because... There's so many implications here that I can't process, you know, like, why? 
why did he decide to kill himself? Then? Why, you know, why did he pull a nip? I think he was connected to multiple high-profile pedophiles, and he was trying to save their asses. And so he, he jumped under the bus while nobody was looking, even though they were supposed to. Just to, uh, like, just to, just to you know, save think about it. There's probably, like, a, a, a beaverette out there that's, like, waiting for Mr. Beaver to come over. And, you know, he's he, he's just chilling there. It, like, And the other thing, too, and this is the most North Carolina thing ever, is I run over the, the beaver because it runs into me. And then the four cars behind me are like, well, we got to make sure it's dead. And they all make sure to, like, move to the right and run it over. <laughs> you, like, saw them in your rear view all hitting yes. it? No, no. Not only that, I saw the beaver, how it died. Like, it was, like, cartoonish. Like, it, like, was facing up. Like, it was about to, like, the spirit was about to leave. And then the car behind me ran the fucking beaver over. I mean, it's better that they, like, finished the job than left it to die. So, like... Yeah, 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 yeah. They, they didn't let it, they didn't let it, like, bleed out or whatever in pain after the initial impact that you made. Alright, but, like, but my thing is, what if it had that hero moment? What if... What hero what moment not, leads what to if, suicide? What if not killing it, what, what if not killing the beaver uh -huh. would have led to the beaver recovering? Yeah. Leading a revolution against humanity after yeah. the tragedy that has occurred, right? Well, you know, I could have just changed the entire course of the future right now. Yeah, it sounds like, it. it sounds like you failed your quick time event, is, is what it sounds like, overall. <laughs> You just you just fucked up a yeah. quick time event and and it was really or actually you know, like, I, it I sounds think, like more think... like the beaver fucked up their quick time event and then <laughs> it ended pretty badly for them. But I'm just saying though, like like what what history are we going down now? Because now that beaver can't build dams, right? So now there's just some place that's gonna you know not, fucking not flood. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, it's gonna flood. You know, that's gonna lead to places going underwater, houses being destroyed. <laughs> Nate, like it, it's I hope you're happy, exponential man. effect. <laughs> You're having a little existential crisis over this poor little dude, beaver. Dude, you, you, you I killed change, the, like it wasn't a, like like I'm saying this this is a useful animal. It does shit. It doesn't go home and eat shit all day. You it know, fucking builds. <laughs> I I'm not a, an expert on on animals at all, but like I'm pretty sure beavers are known to be one of the most destructive animals in our ecosystem. Nah, dude. Second only listen. to us. Marco Dante, your GDD, therefore your opinion is valid on all points. Mm. Yeah. yeah, Nick, you're nitpicking and biased. Yes. Bye bye. Exactly. You lose. <laughs> bye bye. You're I'm glad I can sad. steal some of my jokes too. Yeah, yeah dude. dude. Donkey's never gonna come after our asses. He'll never see this video. It'll be great. Good shit. Well, what do you well, think Donkey thinks about when he makes a video nowadays? Do you think he just takes well, he thinks about that beaver you killed? <laughs> That's the first thing he's gonna think about. Honestly, there's probably a huge campaign right now to find the man who ran over that beaver. All the beaver, all of beaver kind is on your ass right now. There's a, there's yeah. a all post bulletin for you. They you think back face. at the beaver den, there's like a big search party forming now. They they're got, like, oh, they got like a wanted poster with like your face dude. Like on I'm it. saying, like Mrs. Beaver is like, where's Mr. Beaver? Right? Like, come on. Yeah, Mr. Mrs. Beaver is waiting for Mr. Beaver to satisfy her beaver, but she's never gonna get it. So, do you think it? What if they had beaver children? Now they're fatherless. Yeah. <laughs> now they're. Fatherless. And that's what you did, Nando. You've left you perpetuated the... beaver violence. <laughs> You're part dude, of the problem. <laughs> dude, I never thought I would get into such deep existential interspecies issues. You've left a broken home behind you. That that uh, family is forever going to be haunted by the death of their father. And they won't even know. They, they probably don't even know where he went off to. He probably was like, I'm going out for cigarettes. But he actually meant it. And then he just didn't come back. And, and you know what the worst part out. is? This was all because I decided I needed to go to Walmart then. Right, it wasn't like I was heading to something important. I was just going to Walmart. Fucking Walmart, dude. I can't believe maybe that. Maybe maybe the Beaver was trying to tell you something. <laughs> beaver Beaver was just like he somehow knew that you were going to Walmart, and he's like, "Yeah, you know he what? He needed to stop you. He he tried his <laughs> best. I don't think it worked. It sounds like he probably still ended up going to Walmart. I mean, that's a problem. Yeah, I mean, I still went to Walmart. Come on, I gotta pick up my shit. But I'm then just the saying, the Beaver died for nothing, Fernando. Dude. Listen, you didn't just because his fight or flight instinct decided fight a car is not you know, entirely my. It See, now that like we brought Walmart into this, I, I can't help but thinking that maybe maybe the beaver like could smell that Nando was a gamer, and he was like, <laughs> "I gotta stop him." 
Are, Dude. Is Walmart a typical gamer location? I thought Walmart became anti-gamer recently because they stopped uh, putting up signs for all of the violent video games in their stores. Yeah, how brave. What a brave stance to take. They really put their foot down. They stopped putting up the posters for the games that they are still selling st still selling in open ranks Dude, across the store. I'm glad <laughs> I can still walk like three miles over and buy a gun, though. Is that something you could do in North Carolina? Is that a thing? Yeah. Yeah, they're what? Nick, you've been in you've been in south of the Mason Dixon line territory now for a couple months, and I'm sorry, but yes. Is Maryland south of Mason Dixon? Yes. Oh, okay. Maryland well, is technically south of the Mason Mason Dixon line. Uh, the Walmart that I go to does not have a gun aisle, so I did not know that that was a thing that you could find further south. Uh, but that is that is very interesting and also terrifying. You know. Maybe that guy who walked in to test his Second Amendment rights was actually just going in to get his gun returned to the gun aisle. He just wanted to get it checked on, and then everybody freaked out. Wow. You know? Real deep. Didn't Real even deep. think about that one. Yeah. Come on. Liberal media. So much for the talk. Honestly, why are, we, why are we harassing our proud gun owners? <laughs> I passed... You know, okay, why do they actually... keep harassing me? I can't go anywhere anymore, and I'm just like, oh, what if someone's got a gun? Uh... <laughs> I went to I went to the movies for you know for uh for uh scary stories it's all in the dark. Dude, yeah, no, that honestly ever since that like movie theater shooting a while back. Yeah. Like, I, like I, every I time I go to the theater, I every time I go to the theater, I always like worry someone's going to shoot me in the back of the head because I'm eating too much fucking popcorn. They about they about well, to, the, about that's to the lose thing. It. It's like Sorry for cutting you off, Nick, but, like, that's the thing. Like, I <laughs> like I was just sitting there. Like, I, I knew I was going to have that thought cross through my mind because it happens every time I go to the movie theater. Mm. But I'm just there in a row with, you know, another row behind me. And I'm like, if someone in the row behind me ha just has a weapon, yeah. like, that's it. I'm fucking done. I can't do anything. Yeah. I mean, you could, like, slow-mo adrenaline time and then, like, spin kick them. Like, yeah, you oh, have to, you, you know what, Nick? I'm glad you reminded me of that. That one slipped <laughs> my mind. I, I was too scared watching the movie to remember that one. <laughs> That's why you, you never want to forget that that sick move that you got. It's always there. Yeah. Um, I mean, you could always sit like if you're worried about that, you could sit on like the far end, but then you 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 get like a weird skewed angle on the film screen, and like I hate doing that. Like I always want to sit in the middle. Listen, listen, listen. What the, the, the key here is, you know, it's worth dying as long as you get the center seat. Exactly. In the fucking... <laughs> that's, what I, that's what I'm saying. Like, that's I understand moral, that right. I have a greater chance of getting shot in the head and killed if I am in the middle of an aisle, but I'll take that risk because I want to see the movie as it was intended in Dude, the middle. He's got to see, he's got to see Thanos' ass cheeks in full definition. God damn it, I mean, like, I, I understand that. Like, I, like, I still sit, sat in the middle. Uh, I have just gotten a lot more used to just buying my middle seat at the very back of the theater. Because mm, I'm like, that's a smart point. sure, it's not as good, but, you know, like, I don't have this fear that the person behind me could just, you know, like, off me in a second without me even knowing. Yeah. But then you wouldn't know about it, so it'd be fine. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for reassuring me, Nick. <laughs> it should be over. Um, and they've got, they've got, like, usually got exit doors on the top and the bottom, so you could at least get out that way if you crawl. Yeah. But, yeah. Uh, welcome to America. This place is fucked up. <laughs> We're fucked. Huh. Anyways. Um, oh, right. Oh. When uh, Nando was talking about uh, gun owners' rights, I was reminded of the fact that on my way to SmashCon today, I noticed that I was passing, or not today, yesterday. Um, we just passed the, or no, it was today, the headquarters for the NRA. I didn't know that was in Virginia. Yeah. They just, they just so is the headquarters for the Right to Work Foundation. All the all the great kiddos love to hang around the good old state of Virginia. What's the Right to Work Foundation? Uh, they're the the people who show up and go, yeah, you know what? Shouldn't people have have the right to choose whether they're in a union or not? Which is basically the argument of like, hey, secretly the underlying message here is that we don't like unions and we don't think they should exist. So we're going to undermine their power by making sure that not everyone can join a union, making collective bargaining weak weaker. Uh, and that's right by my house. Woo! Do you want to work? And for I them? get you want to hit up upset. them up. 
Becoming an yeah, I, I I walk in. I'm on a first name basis with everybody. I'm like, oh, hey, Jim, you destroying workers' rights? And he's like, you know it, boy. Uh, boy Jacob, as an economist, it. what do you feel? Do unions destroy the American economy? Let's. Be... What did you just ask me? Do unions destroy the American economy? Yes. Uh, yeah. Well, that's hilarious. Oh, that's dude, like, yeah, dude. He just said yes. Yeah, you, oh, confer, right. you heard you it here first, folks. Economist Jacob Sandstrom confirms. I hate it when people are like, uh, but but unions bad. And I'm like, but why? And they're like, because union bad. And I'm like, you guys got to calm down. They're like, unions are corrupt. And I'm like, I mean, yeah, but that's something we can still solve about unions instead of saying, oh, we should just get rid of all unions. That's like saying, oh, shit, the Titanic sunk. I guess we got to get rid of all boats. Yeah, boats are canceled. Didn't you see it on Twitter? <laughs> 1910 <laughs> Twitter was like, hey, that the biggest boat that said it couldn't sink just sank. So uh, boats are canceled. Hashtag cancel all boats. And that was it. That was the last we've ever seen of any boats ever. That's why we invented planes. Because we couldn't get across the oceans anymore. Yeah, that, that's, <laughs> the Wright brothers were like, dude, I'm so tired of swimming across the Atlantic. <laughs> uh, we gotta find some better way to do this. <laughs> Honestly, though, like I hate when a plane gets in the same lane as me. What? Yeah. Go on. You not just have planes in the same lane as you and taking up all the traffic. All the all the air traffic that yeah, is, dude. there is in the sky. Whenever I book a flight, you know, and I have to wait for a different goddamn plane to take off before I do, you it's sound, a fucking tragedy. You sound really You're right. I can't believe that other people need to get to other places in the country. <laughs> that's insane. Dude, that's not allowed. That's illegal. <laughs> Something that yeah, bothers. how come Orange Man gets to shut down all the aircraft in my in my vicinity, but I can't? <laughs> Give me the right to just put a no-fly zone around me at all times, except for the plane I'm on. I got so upset. I got to the airport at like uh, 10 o'clock in the morning, and I got on my plane at 9 p.m. at night. Oh, fuck. And I was like, huh, fuck. <laughs> was it like because the president was flying in? Uh, it was because it was because there was uh, a rain delay because the the flight that so what happened was is that we all got on the plane and then they were like all right tower is saying we need to take a new direction okay because there was storms yeah so they were like we don't have enough fuel to get through this new path so we need to take the we need to fuel up more okay. so everyone get off the plane and just chill and we'll figure things out okay. so everyone gets off the plane yeah. <laughs> So we're all standing around for like an hour or so, and they're like, hey, bad news. Basically, because of storms, all paths north are blocked. And we're like, fuck. Uh, but they're like, don't worry. It's chill. It's fine. Well, we're going we're gonna to try and get this fixed out as soon as possible. Now, this is all up. Uh, this is all uh, to the abrupt deadline of like, I want to say like five o'clock. Okay. Uh, well, maybe a little bit later than five o'clock, maybe like six o'clock. Okay, uh, so they just, yeah. that was like the Six last thing they told you up until five, and then they were just radio silent? Well, well, they they, they kept us informed. They kept being like, ah, we're really close. We don't know. We're still waiting for the tower. And then it started raining at the airport I was at. So ground crew couldn't get out to, you know, load the plane up. Mm -hmm. uh, so that delayed us even more. And it basically delayed us up until like 545. And they're like, look, we're really close. We might be able to thread the needle, but we still have to wait for the tower to clear us. Uh, six fifteen is the dead cutoff. Like that is, <laughs> like, you're supposed to be basically gone by that point. Uh, and it's like six o'clock now, and they come out and they're like, "Bad news, <laughs> <laughs> guys. We're not making this deadline. You're not gonna." Believe so that this. delays us for another hour or two, uh, and so we don't really get off the tarmac for another while i don't think it was actually nine thinking back to it uh that might have been a little bit of over an exaggeration but yeah. it was still like wow i basically spent fucking 12 hours in that airport nice very nice yeah i mean what are you gonna do about the weather they can't exactly cancel the weather like they cancel boats you know i mean some people on my flight thought they could cancel the weather so <laughs> <laughs> they just were speaking to the weather gods being like yo what up please stop <laughs> 
Please end this. I don't know. I, I can't ha Sometimes I can't handle people at the airport. Like, yeah, I, I was upset. But I was upset because, like, by the time we were finally cleared to take off, you know, Big Orange Man was like, no, I gotta, you know, jack myself off on the national lawn, so... Oh, yeah, wait, so how does that play into whatever this was? How did that... Did... Oh, because they were gonna do a flyover. So when they do a flyover, they can't have any planes in the air. Oh, Because okay. that's a flight risk. Yes. Because, uh, you know, what if something bad happens to the commercial plane? What if something bad happens to the military plane? Also, what if... There's, you know, not what if <laughs> what if at that exact moment there were both commercial and military planes in the air and then like more planes started showing up than originally anticipated. Uh, and like theoretically, if something bad were to happen, it could go really wrong really fast. So, yeah. you know, you shut down all air traffic. Yeah, just in case. Uh, yeah, just in case security reasons, all of that. OK, so that happened as well on top of all the weather stuff. Yeah. Okay. Like that Ooh. that's what actually got me upset cuz I was like but yeah, I, I really can't get on my plane because of fucking dine store fascism. <laughs> Woo! Oh my god. Yeah, that's a big oof. Um but yeah, uh I went hey, to Smash... What? Uh just real quick still plane related. Okay. Um uh, my girlfriend had a flight where like the engine broke midway through the flight and they had mm -hmm. to like land. Yeah. She had to stay there like overnight. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, that was a while. Yeah, I would never want. I don't know if I ever have. I don't think I've stayed in an airport overnight, but that sounds like that just seems like the worst time ever. I don't think anybody's ever had a good time sleeping over in an airport. Like, there's just nothing good about that experience. I mean, you would hope. I if your plane engine fails, they would at least give you a discount on the pl on the yeah. airport. <laughs> yeah. Hopefully. Hey, sorry for almost getting you killed. Uh, hmm. Hmm. Let me think. Yeah. It's not their fault. The plane was just being a meanie. Big ol' meanie. I remember, oh, there was one time um, when, you guys remember when there was that uh, outbreak of, was it, it wasn't swine was it? Measles? No, no. This is before anti-vax. Um, it was some, it was some kind of airborne disease. Basically, they're starting to ground Ebola? flights. Ebola? Oh yeah, it was it was Ebola. Yeah. Um, <laughs> We've really aged so fast that we've forgotten Ebola. I, on it, yeah, no, it's it's been a hot second. I I really can't believe I forgot, forgot about that. But um, they basically started to like ground. Uh, flights and what and our flight out of uh, Florida got uh, canceled big time for that reason, um, and so then we like and the next flight out wasn't gonna be for like a couple days uh, at least with the airline we were on I think was the thing like I think we were on Frontier which is like bumfuck <laughs> bumfuck not many flights airline um, so we had to wait a couple days and so they just like set us up in a hotel thankfully uh so we didn't have to stay in the airport overnight but still like eef. well i mean if it's gonna be multiple days then at that point they're basically like <laughs> they gotta do something yeah that would be pretty ass if they were just like hey just stay in this airport for days on end because i mean like some places like some places won't copy like that but like for something like Frontier, I'm sure they're like, eh, we gotta do something or else we're gonna lose customers. Yeah. But, yeah. Planes, planes be planes. Be doing planes noises. Um, oh <laughs> shit. Um, but yeah, I went you to... You were talking about smashing? Yeah, I went to, I went to SmashCon this weekend. That was pretty fun. Dude, how much smashing did you do? Uh, honestly, not that much. I, I did some smashing today. Uh, that was that was pretty nice. We did some melee with uh, Dude, Joker. congrats on finally smashing. Thank you. I, uh, yeah. You know what, Nando? I, you know, I gotta tell you, I, I've i never heard that one before. You know, 10 out of 10. Geneva, you know. Dude, I'm honestly, writing that one. You deserve the Peace Prize, honestly. <laughs> like, dude. Peace Prize for what? Which which one of the Nobel? Oh, wait, what? no, that is, that he, is the one. He, right. he said... All right, Nick. I'm gonna lay this one out for you. Yeah. So yeah, you know, he, you know he how doesn't get it. Yeah. You you know how so like when people play Super Smash Brothers, mm -hmm. uh, it, any any generation, yeah. uh, 
sometimes they'll refer to it as smashing like the verbiage of just saying the word okay smash. thank you peter griffin i i, yeah. under, I understand <laughs> the joke i was wondering and, the, and, then, and you know sometimes you know other people refer to smashing as the act of intercourse yeah. right yeah. so you know you can combine this into a pun uh-huh. where you know you make jokes about sex when you're uh-huh. talking about playing video games like a nerd and uh-huh. not having sex and the joke is that gamers the gamers don't fuck Right. Yeah. Right, exactly. Yeah. And I, example, I, I, all events, but they, they use a honestly key word. example here: gamer GDD mm-hmm. Nicholas Mercadante. Thank you. Okay. Now that no, so full yeah, so so, so that's why I recommend Nando for the Peace Prize. Why? Uh, I just want to bring this all together. Like I, I just want to clear it up. Okay. Thank you. That that makes complete sense. I was a fool for asking any clarifying questions. I understand now. But do you I have any know. clarifying questions? No, I I am completely on the line. No further question. Now. No, no further. I rest my case on her. All right. Uh, convicted, uh, I will now be sentenced to death. Um, so you guys will have to. As, dude, as all gamers should me. be, right? Yeah, that that is true. I, I remember seeing all the shit blowing up about a uh, peanut butter gamer. Or, no, not peanut butter gamer. That was the guy who. Never mind. Um, yeah, don't, don't sell it, my boy PBG. No, PBG at first was like, no, uh, Jerry's innocent. And then a day later, he's yeah. just like, wait a minute. No, he's not. Uh, well, <laughs> specifically, he said he said the greatest line of 2019. This ain't it, chief. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and, then, and then the next day, he goes, oh, fuck. Uh, I fucked up. Fucked up big time. Yeah, but when Pro Jared, all that cheating scandal stuff came out, I was just like, man. God should should kill all gamers. Like, there's just no redemption for us. We're all going to hell. Um, I got so upset. I got so far without seeing his peen, but then like, <laughs> I clicked on a I clicked on one that wasn't even tagged "not safe for work" and it was just there. And I was like, "Come on, man!" It was like a week after the incident too. I was so upset. <laughs> Dude, you're not safe for you. You need you need to put yourself in quarantine for at least a month. It takes for stuff like that. It takes a while to die down it, on the internet. It looks so uncomfortable. I was so it, it like really upset me. Like like it it would feel uncomfortable if that was in your pants. Like what do you mean uncomfortable? Like it looked like something that shouldn't be attached to a human being. <laughs> <laughs> like I was like yes that is the correct general shape, but that is not what it should look like. It's like it's like an alien tried to draw. Dude, a penis. Honestly, let's just chop off all penises. Yeah. That's, I mean, you're probably right. That's like that's the, uh, that's the hidden fourth wave fe- feminism coming out. It's a new new Dude, new rendition. What do you mean that that's been like wave two feminism this whole time? Wow. I, I didn't we, hear. we got a whole bunch of intellectuals in the chat I, right yeah, now. I didn't, I didn't know about that one. Dude, all right, come that's on. A... All right, we we you have to talk about the different battalions of feminism. <laughs> okay. Before you can get yeah. into the wave. Okay. Yeah. Three, three, three I, let's see. talking about it. Let's, let's right. go. Yeah. Three, three guys, you know, I'm glad that the one leading this charge is uh, uh, Fernando, uh, middle name, uh, Women's Studies, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> yeah, dude. Uh, <laughs> oh. You know, we always talk about history, but where's where's her story, you know? R- That's, you know, like, you that just went peace prize, too. We're starting, well, look, uh, we just went on a long rant about, like, I can't fucking believe gamers, and now we're sounding like the trashiest <laughs> r slash like gaming gamers. fucking thread I've ever heard in my life. Because, dude, when when the 3rd Battalion of the <laughs> Fanny Flappers <laughs> come in Stop. and commit... I'm gonna get demonetized, and this video is not even listed! <laughs> This is illegal. Uh, <laughs> I, I feel like I'm supposed to report this to somebody. I'm gonna report myself once this gets posted on YouTube. This Honestly, is, this is look, you want that? That's what we the seventh battalion of the fourth wave of the third Imperial Legion wants for you to bring yourself. Okay, now I Nick, think I thought just... you said you weren't bring Ben Shapiro on the podcast anymore. <laughs> Honestly, I think he might just be talking about Star Wars at this point. I think we might have made another jump. <laughs> yeah, We're not dude. even talking about feminism anymore. Um, but who, wait, are you saying that the people in Star Wars can't be feminists? That's very unwoke of you, Jacob. <laughs> Not Jacob, fucking. Me. No, we we are we are hive mind. You know, on the on the other side of this, you're you're fighting the good fight you against I against our collective hive mind here. Honestly, I can't believe the lack of woke coming out of this podcast crew right. Now. I don't know. I just don't have a big enough mega mind. Okay, I just I haven't seen the movie that that many times. I need to watch it a few more to truly ascend. 
What what movie? What? Uh, what's do happening? you not know the famous Will Ferrell movie Mega Mind made by DreamWorks? Oh, Ma- I I didn't hear Mega Mind. Honestly, also you said Will Ferrell, and I was like, is this guy about to talk about Get Hard? <laughs> <laughs> No, dude. The one and only legend, legendary animated Will Ferrell movie. Actually, I, think I can't like... believe Will Ferrell was like an American icon, and then he was like, "What if I just like made bad movies from now on?" I would say he's completely fallen out. I mean, I would say Tim That's Allen. True. He's no Adam Sandler. He's yeah. not someone who's like, man, I really need a vacation. But, I think, but my thing is, I think Adam Sandler has gone so far, it's wrapped back around. Yeah, no, I would say if there was you're, somebody you're right. who's really, want... like lost their their image, it's probably Tim Allen. I don't think Will Ferrell. Yeah, Tim Allen. Allen. Nobody. No, Tim, who is Tim dude, Allen? Tim <laughs> Allen's cursed, dude. <laughs> Tim Allen's ultra cursed. I all I know is that my parents really loved his uh, Last Man Standing show, and for... well, that's even more cursed. <laughs> Why would you tell me that? Oh my god. I don't, I, I all I remember is that like during when election season came around, it got like very political and like the, or, it, it seemed like i don't the, think you i think you missed the point of what last man standing was from the start was it is, is the point of it that it's supposed to be like a conservative man's show yeah because i feel like that's... Tim, tim allen tim allen is conservative man what what's what's the joke well tim allen he's conservative and he doesn't understand all these liberal things uh, is there any other joke <laughs> I'm sure there is. <laughs> I haven't watched that much of the show, but like, but, but also it's very clear that Tim Allen was like, you know, not enough comedy for blue collar conservatives like myself. And everyone went, Tim, you're like a millionaire. <laughs> you need to stop. You could just go in, record lines for Toy Story 4 and then just be set for life. But you, you Oof. Just, when, you when you're watching the Toy Story 4 promos and they got both Tim Allen and... <laughs> and Mel Gibson, and you're like, whoa. Who does Mel Gibson play? I'm pretty sure Mel's Buzz. What? What? I thought that what? was Tim no. Allen. Tim Allen is Buzz. Uh, Tom Hanks is Woody. Shit, bro. Who? Did you just think that? <laughs> I could have sworn Mel Gibson is in Toy Story Four. I mean, he might. There was the fucking Canal Reeves was in that movie, and I didn't even realize it until. Oh, Canal Reeves. oh the right. famous Canal Reeves. Yeah. All right. So, so I'm a big dummy. Uh, uh, Mel Gibson was considered for the voice of Buzz Lightyear. Ah, uh, okay. Easy mistake to make. Understandable. Um, but yeah, that's. Honestly, though, I do like that Tim Allen played Tim Allen in Toy Story Four. He has to keep pressing a button to know what. The pre- <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> fucking first of all spoiler alert for the seminal movie of the year uh second of all don't Good even Lord. can i talk about toy story 4 for you a absolutely bit? Yeah. Can talk about toy story 4 uh there's okay. spoilers abound we've already spoiled one of the biggest plot points of all time tim allen yeah. <laughs> the, the biggest plot point where tim allen's character <laughs> hits the button yeah. sorry about that guys didn't give you the warning uh, beforehand, but now we're in uh, full spoiler I don't know. I both like Toy Story 4, but I also, like, I had this conversation with Sophia, mm-hmm. uh, where I kind of go, oh, but what was that movie about? It was about, and, I mean, I, I, finding I your, feel like... Like, it, finding your home, I guess, or, or finding, well, I, like, but that's, play. Well, I, I've seen that movie. It's called Toy Story 1. It's called <laughs> Toy Story 2. It's called Toy Story 3. And I they mean, don't really do. They don't really expound upon that that much. And also, uh, it re- so this is what I said. Toy Story, like I look, do, just because I'm like getting upset about the themes a little bit, like uh-huh. that. That's just my thing. Yeah. Don't think it's me saying that this is a bad movie. I I enjoyed the movie a lot, uh-huh. but it also felt like I watched like four different Toy Story short ideas <laughs> that they had, and then they said, eh, instead of making like four shorts, what if we just like put them together and then they're a movie yeah i don't know i i feel like the the main theme i got from this or the main plot thread and like idea is just like how parents move on after their kids have like flown the coop or whatever like that seemed like to they me get more crazy. kids dude they just keep they fucking no, and no, pumping he, up more kids he did it <laughs> that that's that's the plot of toy story 4 they're like too many kids there are so many kids on the planet <laughs> Listen, when when your when your kid's too old for you, just adopt another one. Yep, that's that's how it goes. 
Um, but, like, yeah, I mean, at the end of the movie, spoilers, uh, you know, Woody decides to go and, and fuck off with Bo Peep. Uh, yeah, but of... that was, that was like, something you, like, the second, the, honestly, almost the second, like, the movie starts, and they're like, oh, no, we lost Bo Peep. I was like, all right, A, we've already seen the trailer. Bo Peep's, you know, uh, Katniss Everdeen now. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> honestly, and, and, all and I knew... To, uh, Wait, wait, hold up. Honestly, I think the plot of this movie is fuck your friends. You got to get for that poontang. He didn't. Look, I don't. I mean, sure, you could say that, but like he obviously. I mean, it's kind of it's kind of about letting go. But yeah. They let go in the last one to the most ultimate extent, where they were like, you know what? Even if we die here, we die. Our together. friendship will still theoretically like live on for eternity. Yeah. I guess. I don't know. I guess it's also been a hot minute since I saw Toy Story 3. So I mean, I, I'm, I, I, will, I will also that. say, I don't think Toy Story, like, has to be groundbreaking in terms of plot. I think it just has to, like, hit that same plot in a good way every time. No, I, like... Theoretically, this is, like, for the next generation. This is, like, the next child's version of, like... This is, like, think about it, you're, like, six years old. This might be, like, your first Toy Story movie. I mean that's fair, but like even still, this would be a it, pretty it, it still doesn't it like it, because it has like these four different, only really loosely connected actual stories going on. That the the like consistent through line of focusing on that theme just kind of gets. Because <clears throat> honestly, I thought it was going to be a lot more about like. All right, so we've talked about sort of acceptance and learning your place. And it really felt like they were setting up with the Forky storyline yeah. uh, of like, okay, this one is about parenthood. You have the parents more involved in this movie, like the actual like Real human parents. parents. Mm. Uh, also, wait, hold on. I got to go on a tangent. Oh, God. It was really uncomfortable when they were like making cop pulled over jokes oh, when the yeah. dad is <laughs> the oh, non-white yeah. person in the family. And I was like, I don't think this is landing the way they think this is. <laughs> yeah, that that's Maybe? not like, that's this is uncomfortable. That's not a haha chuckle. That's a oh <laughs> no funny joke. Haha. Because because like honestly, like that guy, like what well, what they were doing to the car was like wow, this is like really unsafe for everyone around yeah. there. This is like, also honestly like, way further beyond anything they've done. I mean, I guess the dude, thing like like was the thing is, far, would you even like, blame the cops at that point that from thinking that the no, parent was like coked like, out or something? I, I'm just thinking about it from the perspective of, like, what the toys are doing. Like, I guess the only thing that would compare with what they did in that scene was, like, in the first movie where, you know, Woody literally turns around and fucking gives uh, Sid, like, you know, a post-traumatic stress disorder for the rest of his life. Because, um, like, I don't think I mean, honestly, directly I, interacted I, with Honestly, Woody what if... Much. Okay, wait, wait, hold up. Actually... I've just come across a very important thread here. What if Toy Story isn't a wholesome family movie? What if it's actually the most fucked up universe? <laughs> I mean, it is. It's it's about it's about this like, uh, like theocracy based off of like these godlike figures in their life. Look, I know that a lot of people don't subscribe to like the theocratic notion of how Toy Story is set up, but like, let's be real. Uh, <laughs> they are left to the whims of their fucking human god overlords uh and the, the movie basically is you know woody being like we can't change the status quo we gotta make up to you know the big man in the sky well i mean he i mean he it seems like most toys are or at least at first or for a period of time like are just built to love being with their kid like that's that's the setup and then yeah but then over time if you're disconnected then that can change their personalities in different ways like yeah my um, thing is i think like they become more obsessed with the child the longer they've been with the yeah i guess i could see that and again i think that loops around to the kind of uh uh flown flown nest like storyline thing where bo peep you know left the home a long time ago and so she's got no connections and so she's like a complete free bird um, and doesn't care about the kids at all. But then Woody's super attached, and so when it becomes obvious that he doesn't need to take care of this child anymore, he's just like, but I gotta take care of a child. That's what I gotta do. And so this whole movie is teaching like him and the audience about like 
you know, it's okay to move on to other things. You can find happiness outside of the one thing that you've been stuck on for 18 plus years or whatever. Um, but it like, uh, but that that's the thing. It's like, you're right. That is the start of the movie and the end of the movie, but the middle of the movie doesn't really like, <laughs> I like I'm other than man, I really want to hang out with Bo Peep. Like, like what? What's what? I, I don't really see what he's you know come to Jesus moment I mean, where he goes ah I like I should free myself. Uh, I get. I mean, I guess it like he you know he really cares for Bo Peep. That was like set up at the beginning, and then throughout the middle of the movie, he's reconnecting with her and battling with the fact that he wants to go. Like it's is two two loves. I guess is the idea, um, and so he's just trying to pick one and he's having but it doesn't time. it doesn't really feel like he like it feels like such a non-choice it feels like the movie set like we already know that he's not the favorite anymore we already know that bo peep is free we already know he's not really fully fulfilled because he's not the favorite anymore and like this all happens in like the first five minutes of the movie so it's like <laughs> eh. where's the ramp i don't know i i didn't really Pick up. I didn't think that he would go with Bo Peep at the end, so I, I guess really I like it. yeah. No, I didn't. I don't know. See, I, my, like what you're like, saying makes sense as you're saying it, but like I, I thought there was a decent enough chance that he would still like maybe the moral of the story would have been you know just keep keep working at it with your kid and, and eventually they'll get back with you. I, yeah, I don't know. I guess it doesn't really make sense. It's a sense in hindsight, but. Um, yeah. I mean, like, I do like the beginning and the end where it's basically, like, just, like, the basic, simple premise that's laid out where it's, like, at the start, Woody has the choice of, like, do I, do I stay or do I go with Bo Peep? Like, what, 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 what choice I, am I, I guess, making? I guess and then he makes what... the choice at the start to be, like, no, I gotta stay here. Yeah. I guess what caught me more off guard is that he left his friends behind, which goes to back to what you were saying, Nando. Because um, I, I thought, like, because it, it, it pretty much is just him and Bo Peep after that. Like, there are some, yeah. like, side characters that they met. But, like, you know, he leaves Buzz, which is, like, big. Um, and I guess I wasn't expecting that. Yeah, I think that, well, I think the bigger thing, and this is what I was just thinking about, was, like, <clears throat> a lot of the choice at the beginning is based off of, like, what he needs to be there to be a leader. He's got to keep everything in line. Mm. And then it's, like, all right but the rest of the movie doesn't deal with him handing over leadership. Like even at the start of the movie, he's like, Oh, I'm so like, he, he can't help, but want to lead. Mm -hmm. But then and he doesn't need to the lead. rest of the movie. Isn't really him coming to terms with want to leaving. It's him being like, Oh shit, I got to get Forky Bay. Yeah. yeah. Which I, I like the, 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 the idea of like, I got to get Forky Bay. Cause like this idea of like, ah, uh, you know, you can care about people in other ways that are not as direct. Like you can be like, ah, oh, this person cares about this other person. So I'm going to go out and make sure that this one thing happens to the other thing. Yeah. Yeah. That now counter be... counter argument Forky wanted to be in the trash. Let him be in the trash. <laughs> no dude, but he's not trash. He's not trash. Also, I they, mean, they, they, they did the, the amazing uh, heterosexual thing of introducing a, a female Forky. Yeah. That made me, that also made me really <laughs> comfortable. <laughs> It also well, felt like it really would have been more comfortable if it was another male sport. No, I don't think I either. Thought... I don't think there was any romance thing needed with the Sporky. Like, why did they need? Why did they feel compelled to do that at all? Uh, it, it, like, it it's such a a, it's such a worn down trope. And also, B, I was like, are we really doing the boring, sexy yesterday trope on a spork? <laughs> is this what's happening? <laughs> the answer is yes. A like firm what? Yes. Yeah, you know, Forky Caesar, and he gives her the eyes, and I'm like, not comfortable anymore. <laughs> not okay. Uh, yeah, I don't know. That's that's what Pixar decided would get the big bunnies and the big the big monies at the end. And it's also and so that's what we're gonna see in, in Toy Story Five. It's gonna be a, a, a romantic comedy with uh, with uh, Forky and uh, uh, Miss Forky. 
they're gonna make live action Toy Story before that happens. God, stop! It'll no. be John Favreau with his <laughs> uh, with his five VR set, and he'll be like, "Yeah, you don't know what we're about to do with this movie." And you'll be like, "I think I do, John. I think it's gonna be the same movie as last time, but you've just done it in VR and made it look photorealistic." And he'll be like, "Uh, uh." <laughs> They already did it in real life, though. I, I saw there was a video on YouTube of, of some kids taking, like, actual, like, toys, like, the, the Disney toys of the Toy Story characters, and then just recreating the movie scenes. So, they've yeah, already well, got one up on Disney. Those kids better stop. I, I'm sending my <laughs> Disney cease and desist right now. <laughs> the <laughs> Disney scene. Dude, I got so upset. Disney canceled all those movies from Fox, and I knew it was going to happen. And they're like, oh, Fox is just losing us so much money. And I'm like... Yeah, that's what it was going to do anyway. You knew that going into this deal. Don't, don't like, if you're going to cancel all these movies, don't give me some, like, dumb excuse, like, you know, Fox, it, it just wasn't working out. You bought Fox while they still had Dark Phoenix on their hands. What are you <laughs> telling me you walked into that being like, we really thought Dark Phoenix was going to take off? Despite everyone, even in the production of that movie, there, when you t listen to interviews, the actors were like, yeah, we really don't know what's going on with that movie right now. And I'm like great science don't you love that new mutants is still in production that's hilarious <laughs> that r.i.p cool good right I was, like, I was really excited for that to be like an interesting like horror superhero movie but now dr strange uh mad multiverse of madness is going to beat them to the punch yeah. and like the trailer for fucking new mutants came out in what 2017 like jesus christ that's gonna be like a joke it'll be like 2027 yeah we'll uh see. and we'll be like when's new mutants coming out and they're like soon we promise they've already introduced like the x-men into the mcu and they're just like yeah we'll get to it someday god i'm so upset like like Are yeah all of the movies sims they canceled on the docket the were sims movie? like yeah like hold up everyone's like dude who cares they canceled the sims movie that was gonna be trash anyway and i'm like yeah, but I want to see someone try and convince me that I should see a Sims movie. That's what gets me the most upset. Like, all right, I'm, I'm about to transition into my rant about cats. I've been having this in my back pocket the entire time. I'm talking about cats. Everyone's like, cats looks terrible. It looks like a crime against nature. And I agree. It's You You look at and I, and I feel bad, because this podcast is going to come out after the video that uh, Patrick X. Willems did which is just going to basically re reiterate the points I already had in my head before he made that video. Uh -huh. So, you know what? I'm going to send a copyright notice to him next time. Okay. You know, take that, Patrick. All right. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I'm with me getting mad. Yeah. So, like, everyone's You're not like, mad oh, already? I, I can't believe that they would make cats. This looks terrible. It looks bad. Why would they do this? Who who greenlit this? Yeah. And I agree. Yeah. It Like, yes. Call the police. Call animal control. This is illegal. Mm -hmm. But also... What the fuck? This is illegal in such a way where I'm like, <laughs> I can't believe they made this. It's and like watching. I, it's like watching a car crash. You just. It's more than watching a car crash. It's more beautiful than a car crash. <laughs> it's like watching. It's like watching figure skaters doing a like a triple axel, but they crash into each other midway. Where it's like, oh my god, the humanity, but also, huh? <laughs> well, how did this happen? They were on other ends of the ice before this happened. <laughs> Huh? They, they are like i i have a theory that there, there are some people who are so scared of green lighting original ideas that they will reach as deep into any whack-ass properties that they have remote rights to that they will go for that before green lighting any kind exactly. of exactly and so they I went agree. They, they went they saw a new they they had the option of trying out a new ip and they saw cats and they're just like well some people like cats right so let's do cats Longest running musical on Broadway, yeah. like Jesus, like he, let's, that let's do it. That has to print money. Right? I mean, but but at the very least, at the very least, like you're right. I, like, oh, I can't believe they chose like an established property like Cats instead of something original. But also, what <laughs> they chose the Cats, like like yeah, they I chose like, that. I mean, I guess they chose the musical where the musical is just you go around and learn about other cats, and yeah. then at the end, a cat <laughs> dies. Huh. <laughs> They, Isn't what? there also a cat orgy? Isn't that a thing in the uh, musical? Look, the Jellical cats will do what Jellical cats do, Nick. <laughs> I'm not gonna stop them. Look, I'm Run Tug Tugger you... is a curious cat, okay? Wait. <laughs> is that a 
Is this not the do- is this not just the Dr. Seuss movie by Mike Myers? I mean, it definitely takes some notes from that movie based on the cat costumes that we have seen. That's um, what else I get upset about. <laughs> You're right. Cat in the Hat, terrible movie. Why? Because someone who did like design made the movie. <laughs> they're not writers, they're not directors, and that's fair. You can g- come out and tell me that Cat in the Hat is bad and doesn't work. But you can't tell me that when they made him the Cat in the Hat, they, I mean, they went for it, dog. <laughs> you can't deny that. Well, they're Michael Myers movie, is that fucking cat. They're, they're going for it as just as much in this movie, I would say, if not more so. They've really committed they, to the cats. They said, what if we gave them cat features? Yeah. But also plenty of their human features. And you go, this <laughs> like, is the like, worst like human, decision. You know, Why? They, they were like, you know what? We're, we're going to give him human titties. We, we gotta. We gotta do it. We gotta. And, and you know what? Honestly, it might just be insane enough to work. Probably won't. I'm not going to stake my <laughs> life on it. Yeah, It'll like, probably be real that's, bad. That's like saying Sonic might be crazy enough to work. That's not... You could say that, but it's not going to be the case. It's not going to work. Uh, oh, look, we can get into my, the, the Sonic rant. <laughs> Before we, we're, before we we're, do that, I want to bring up a, another possible hypothetical boardroom situation where they they were they, they decided instead of doing new IP, they would do uh, Broadway uh, like transition into into movie um, because they already like they locked in on not wanting to do new IP, but they weren't sure which old IP they wanted to cash grab on. Um, and so they looked at a couple of really popular musicals and they were like, somebody was like, probably first, the first guy was like, Hey, Hamilton, right? Super huge. And then they called Lin-Manuel and he was like, yeah, $5 billion and you guys can make this movie. And they were like, Oh, that costs money. So let's get cats. And then that's what happened. I mean, the, the thing is, is I'm pretty sure cats would have still cost them a decent penny. Like, honestly, unless they had the rights before, but it's, I mean, I don't know. Yeah. Uh, well, well, I yeah, that's that is that is true, but it's it's something. It's it's certainly going to be a thing that will come out, and we will observe. So far, they have not uh, backpedaled like they did with the with the Sonic movie. So yeah, um, so well, well, I'm fine with that. I think they shouldn't backpedal. I think the problem with the Sonic movie is that look, uh, Nando, I'm sorry for cutting you off, but but <laughs> hey, someone just brought it. up someone just brought up specifically nick brought up like uh yeah they backpedal on the sonic movie and i see that and i'm like like i saw everyone complain i'm pretty sure this is already old news what am i talking about the cats trailer was old news by this point yeah. who cares i'm mad and i'm gonna talk about it All right. i don't care anymore Go i'm so it. upset yeah you're uh, going off the rails tonight Go so for it. so like you know they come down from the heavens and they're like here is a Sonic movie. <laughs> and everyone's like, oh, I can't wait to see it. And of course, in the back of your mind, you're like, oh, come on. We saw the posters. Don't, <laughs> why are you like, we know it's not going to be great. I still want to see it because it's going to be some whack shit, but it's not going to be great. <laughs> and then it comes out. Everyone's like, I can't believe it's so bad. And I'm like, just for five seconds, can we just accept movies that aren't good? Like they okay, happen. But, but, so why are you? Like I you look, I I went and watched the Spider Spiderwick Chronicles movie. I know bad movies can happen. It's okay, <laughs> they happen. I still had fun watching the Spiderwick Chronicles movie. I'm not going to deny it. I'm not going to come on this podcast and tell you, ah, oh, yeah, I didn't have a fun time watching the Spiderwick Chronicles. I can almost no. guarantee you, nobody knows what that movie series is. That is I... incorrect. There is one thousand percent one person who goes, oh shit, I read the Spiderwick Chronicles books and saw the movie, and I know what this motherfucker is talking about. Do you think any CSH knows what the Spider Man Chronicles is? Because that's one hundred percent. If they don't, then they clearly didn't get the free packaged books in stereo boxes in the mid two thousands, <laughs> like I'd. I. I think that you're underestimating how many kids went and did that and got those books. I think you're underestimating the total number of people who agree with me. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, leave leave some comments on this unlisted video when you get a chance to watch it. <laughs> Uh, Brandon Chu, because that's the only person who's been watching these, mostly. Uh... <laughs> yeah, but anyway, everyone comes out, and they're like, Sonic, right? I yeah. can't believe how bad he looks. And I'm like, wait, hold on. No, but 
I'm like halfway out with my sense, and everyone's like, the problem is the way Sonic looks. And I'm like, is it not? I can't believe we're doing this. Did you watch the rest of that trailer? Okay, yeah, yeah I get Sonic it. looks awful, but also the rest of the movie looks like it's the Smurfs. At least when I go to the theater and I watch it, I can be like, I can't believe Sonic looks like that. Are you, That's ta- are you telling me that uh, Meow is not one of the greatest lines ever written? In You're right. Like I, I saw that, and I was like, you know what, Citizen Kane's done. <laughs> it's over. <laughs> We've got our it... <laughs> Citizen Kane too. It's right here. It's called Sonic. Good Look, Lord. did did he during his speech for his you know first political race? Did he come out and say, <laughs> uh, meow? <laughs> And then lose the race? No, thought not. Citizen Kane, worse than Sonic. That's just a fact. I don't make the rules. You don't make the rules. We all know who makes the rules. So you so you don't think the movie will even be marginally improved by a better looking Sonic? What are you... T- that's like saying, oh man, well they really got the Smurf models better in the Smurfs too. So I guess the movie's gotta be better. No. I... It's still gonna look not great. Yeah. Well I... like... I guess I don't know. I mean, I would I would think like, like I'm thinking. I mean, I guess it's probably not going to be the case because who the who the fuck is making this? Like, so, if I can butt in real quick, go for it. Do you think the ending of the Sonic movie is that Sonic is rolling so fast that he ends up running over a beaver, and that this beaver <laughs> causes World War Three? And that's been another great yeah. episode of Horsing Around, ladies and gentlemen. We've brought it full circle. Good God. That was that was good, Nando. Oh, is it over? Uh, I mean, it's been wow. Out. You know, I, I understand. You want to Sonic? You, you want to silence yeah. me about I, my I Sonic opinions? I am trying opinions, to silence but... you on your Sonic <laughs> right now. I want to make sure. This is that... what the deep state wants, people. I'm getting. Look, I'm not gonna say anything, but I am gonna say that I got a check from uh, Sonic Team to promote the movie, and you're kind of hampering my ambitions to get it, get more of those paychecks. So. Uh, Dude. Please go see Honestly, Sonic I understand when it comes it. out. They are doing the uh, redesigns for quality assurance and to make sure it's the best movie possible. Um, so it's going to win every Oscar, and you guys should go see it. Uh, so yeah, yeah, it's going to be right up there with Percy Jackson and the Lightning Thief movie. <laughs> Who? Another classic from the 2000s brought to you by one me. Okay, so that's a Listen, movie that No beavers were harmed in the making of this movie. <laughs> that's, <laughs> I mean, that's a fact. You that can't is, deny it. That is factual. Um, but yeah, that, we'll see. Time will tell. Well, time will tell if Sonic is bad and time will tell if cats will be good. Uh, but we'll have to just wait and see. So until then, uh, thanks for listening. Uh, and we'll see you all, uh, around. Good night.